Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Elite Talk Show. I am your host at Syracuse, Sarah. Tonight, we need to go over the Go Home Dynamite Show for All In. A surprise entry to the Casino Battle Royal. And who might else be coming? And who was MJF's inspiration to get into the business? Again, I'm your host, Sarah. And join me on this one adventure out of Fort Lauderdale, Orlando. Hi right, guys. I've seen in the weather report. It's raining down there. Yeah, I'm, we're starting to get right some rain right now. I'm hearing all for you guys are getting floods. Like no, I'm seeing the videos. I'm like, what's happening in the northeast? <laughs> that's a that's a few hours south of me, and no, I've got some family down there though, and they, thankfully they're safe. The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network. Found exclusively at WrestlingWithJonas.com. Down there, you see some of the videos. Yeah, no, I have. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get into the unfortunate topic at hand. Um, Former WCW, TNA, and Shimmer wrestler uh, Daphne uh, unfortunately took her own life yesterday. Um, She went live on her Instagram. Just unfortunately talked about self-harm and unfortunately family and friends couldn't get to her in time. Uh, folks, if you need help, please seek it out. She will be missed. Yeah, she will be. I remember her TNA run. She was really good in TNA mm-hmm. with some of her feuds and stuff. And like, you know, she really went into that crazy character that she was when she was first in WCW. It's un- it's just really unfortunate because uh, there was like this person decided to post her her video that she was streaming live which like don't do that like come on now guys and like, there's always going to be one somebody yeah, exactly like so the family doesn't need to be reminded about that so it's just like it's unfortunate it's sad it's just like like you said if you need help speak with somebody like you know it, don't be alone you know sometimes counseling is good i think it's now time that we have to say like if you need counseling speak with somebody or an actual like therapist Mm -hmm. to get through it you know because i know life is hard but it's just unfortunate i you know yeah i know you mentioned that wwe put out a memo that there's counselors available i'm sure aw is going to be doing the same hopefully they do i mean i don't know if they already started talking to some of the wrestlers because a lot of people work with her you know like you i saw like bailey uh kimberly from impact you know um Yeah, Mickey J. Yeah, like I saw her on God TV. Like I'm, I'm one of the patrons for God TV. Like it, it her. She was like, you can tell that she was still in pain about something, but like you know, but she was happy to be around her, uh, like you know, her friends, which was Mickey and Lisa, formerly known as Victoria from WWE, and so Cal Val. So, I mean, it's it's just, it's just really like it really devastated everybody. Like you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. All right, uh, so last night was AEW's Dynamite Go Home show. Uh, they drew 1.05 million viewers. You know, not bad. They're over that 1 million mark again, but mm-hmm. they've seen better shows. Yeah, they got to be careful with this. Like, look, I love AEW, but y'all got to be careful on how you book some of your shows. I mean, like, the Chicago crowd were respectful, which is shocking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, wait. They're not chanting boo or something. Like they even like chanted this is awesome to the ladies. I mean it was like a bit of a whisper, but yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we did see CM Punk get physical for the first time in 
Seven years? Seven and a half years, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Getting a I mean, Come on, come on now. It's it's 2.0. They have punchable faces. <laughs> they do. And Daniel Garcia, I mean, just come on. He has that baby face look, though. Like, you know, he has just that baby, like, look, you know. <laughs> the if Dallas was watching this, don't worry. I'm not going to go after him, okay? He's all yours. <laughs> and, of course, we got the, uh, you know, the confrontation. You know, Sting comes down. Sting and Darby, they come down and save the day. Uh, mm -hmm. We get the confrontation between Darby Allen and Sting getting Jets' faces. Sting says he wants to share. He always wants to share the ring with CM Punk. Um, loves what Darby does, and he will be backstage for the match on Sunday at All Out. So he won't be down at ringside. Mm -hmm. So, so we could just tell that Punk is winning this, right? <laughs> I, you, you hope so. I, I mean, like, look, if if he decides to let Darby win, then I'll have respect for CM Punk, but. You, you. I think everybody will know that it's going to be dark. Uh, it's going to be CM Punk winning this match. It's his if first CM, match back. If CM Punk doesn't win, Chicago will burn down that night. No, 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 no. Actually, I think they will be respectful for it. It's depending on how he wins, though. Mm -hmm. If he does it in a respectable way, then Chicago will understand. But they will respect it. You know. We'll see. So, yeah, we'll see. But, um, yeah. So we'll see. Like, I, look. It, it like how CM Punk is acting right now. He could easily uh, give the win to Darby Allen because he feels like Darby Allen is the future. Mm -hmm. You know. So my question is: Did we see a little bit of foreshadowing? Sting says he wants to work with CM Punk, or he's always wanted to share the ring. Do you think we'll see those two at some point? Oh, of course! Come on now. Like uh, CM Punk said that he has respect for Sting too. So I was just like, come on now. Right. Don't you think some of the people want to work with Sting? Like, they're just choppy at the bit just to have, like, a match. Like, come on. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. You know, like, I bet you Punk was just like, okay, I want, he wants the young guy, but I bet you he wants Sting as one of his, like, opponents. So, come on now. I think we'll see CM Punk, you know, go on a multi-win streak, um, get a title shot, and then maybe 60 months from then he'll start putting over some of the younger guys, I think. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. I mean, like, I don't know what he he's feeling right now. If he does want to win, I don't know how. I I don't know who decides who wins in, in the booking of AEW. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's the wrestlers themselves. They're like, okay, I'll give you this win. You know, you know things like that. Uh, another surprise action. Uh, we saw a little confrontation between Paul White and the Factory. Uh, Gun Club That's, comes out towards nope. the end. Nope. Gun nope. Club turns heel. Nope. I, I, that whole segment was just a waste of time. I'm sorry. They could have easily used that for something else. <laughs> Look, I love Big Show. I mean, QT Marshall is interesting. It's just, it's not working for me, honestly. I just, and now they have what? The Gun family now heels? Like, apparently. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see, like, because it, it sounds like that it wasn't QT Marshall that uh, made the hit, like, offered them to uh, to betray Big Show. Well, sorry, Paul White. Um, so it seems like it's somebody else. So, so maybe we'll find out who is the, the hit person or the person that offered the hit to Paul White. Or maybe it was just Billy himself. I mean, has he ever feuded with him in WWE? I'm trying to think. I no. want to say yes when they were part of um, DX. I want to say when Billy was part of DX, maybe. Yeah. Oh, no. No, I remember. It was just like he came in when I think Billy Gunn was having a singles run. So he wasn't being used that much in 99. And then when he came, when he was part of DX again, then he got injured. And so they kicked them out. So technically, this is like their first time kind of feuding, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, here's a fun fact for you. Um, there's, I believe, five, maybe six male wrestlers that are undefeated. Colton Gunn has the most wins out of all of them. Really? Mm -hmm. in, the, in singles or is it in tag? Uh, combined. Hmm. Interesting. I think he's 24-0. Oh. 
I'm pretty sure he's only done tag and trios matches. I don't know if he's maybe he's done one or two singles matches. Uh, yeah, I I just I'm I'm gonna have to say this right now. Sorry, folks, but I I think dark and dark elevation should not be canon anymore. I'm sorry. It's just like it's just uh, it's just like for me. It's like now that Rampage is available, I think now they should just make Dynamite and Rampage just canon, and just make uh, like Dark and Dark Elevation like the like developmental type of show, which they're planning to do. Mm-hmm. But it's just like it's just trying to keep up everything and trying to keep all of the wins, and like finding out like from the Casino Battle Royale for the women, all of their freaking roster women were all on Dark or Dark Elevation and not on the main like Dynamite or Rampage, which is annoying. Mm-hmm. Like, come on. Yeah. They have to really fix their form. I'm sorry. It's just like, it, I, I love them to death, but if they're, their form is gonna, about to get stale and the fans are going to turn on them. Uh, speaking of the Women's Battle Royal, we'll stay on that topic. Uh, Kara mm-hmm. Hogan has been officially added to the Women's Battle Royal. How do you feel about that? So is she signing? I, I want her to sign. Come on. I know she wants to be with her girl. <laughs> I imagine so. I mean, look at this lineup they got right now for the Women's Battle Royal. Uh, they have Nyla Rose, Julia Hart, Big Swole, The Bunny, Thunder Rosa, Red Velvet, Ty Conti, Penelope Ford, Diamante, Hikirushita, Emi Sakura, Jade Cargill, Pierre Hogan, Abaddon, Kylan King, Layla Hirsch, and Anna Jay. That's 17 people. Um, there's also been two rumored, uh, Ruby Soho, formerly Ruby Riot, and also rumored because she just hit her 90-day no-compete clause ending, uh, Lana, or CJ Perry, whatever she will go by, probably not Lana. Mm-hmm. I think she's probably going to debut with uh, with her husband, Miro, because the, the promo that they had, um, uh, Eddie Kingston and Miro, it sounds like Lana's going to, almost get involved or something because like mm-hmm. Meryl seems like he's afraid of his wife. <laughs> Which is funny. <laughs> um, Did you see that post I think they just day. Yeah. I think they just announced Riho. Um she's in the Battle Royal now. Okay. That would yeah, put so, eighteen. Yeah. And then um and I think Big Swole is in it. Did you even announce Big, yeah. Big Swole? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. The, I think it's the whole women's division and Anna Day just came back so it's just like I think it's everybody I mean, like, I don't know if they're going to take out a few girls so that they can add the surprises because, because like, from that list, <clears throat> excuse me, I only see, like, three winning. It's either uh, Thunder Rosa, Jade Cardhill, or the surprise, which I don't know if they want Jade Cardhill to win yet, you know? So, I mean, because, like, she's still kind of new-new, but mm-hmm. they need to give her more matches, like, honestly. Like, I don't know what's the progression with her wrestling, you know? Because I really want her to be champion, <laughs> honestly. Um, but um, uh, Thunder Rosa, of course, that's the feud that's going to happen between her and um, and Britt Baker that come up. Mm-hmm. That could be like next year's feud, if they want to. I mean, she got attacked backstage by Nyla and Jace. Maybe she feuds with one of them for now. Yeah. Then well, yeah, other- you know what? Yeah, that that would be... So that that will help, you know, both. I, I think more with Jade. So, like, mm-hmm. Thunder Rosa and Jade feuds for a little bit so that that way, you know, Jade can learn some things. Um, so, I think it's going to be the surprise, which is probably be Ruby Soho, you know. But, you know, I I mean, it could always be somebody else, you know. It could be Tessa Blanchard. I mean, I know she's rumored for NWA, but it could be Tessa Blanchard. It could be, like, um, uh, what's their names now? Uh, Casey or Jessica? I think that's their name. Uh, uh, former Jessica, Iconic. Cassie, Lee, and Jessica McKay. Yeah. So they could, it could be them. You never mm-hmm. know. I mean, like you like you said, CJ Part, uh, Perry, you know, she just, her 90 days just completed. Santana Garrett, she could be added there, you know. Formerly known as, like, uh, uh, Vanessa Bourne, if she wants to go to AEW, you know, work there. Because she just got, she's already completed her 90 days, I believe, as well, so... There's so much potential right now, which is exciting, yeah. you know. Is I thought I saw a rumor uh, Jordan Grace is she free agent as well? No, no, no. She resigned with Impact, but you know, you never know. They could do the Forbidden Door thing and uh, have Diana 
or maybe somebody from NWA, you know, like, you know, Melina. I mean, I don't know if she's... What if, uh, what if Maki Ito comes back? Ooh, that, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're trying to get some of the Japanese girls to come back. I mean, I know that they have, uh, was it Riho and what was the other one? She does, uh... Is back. Yeah. Yeah, her. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I'm thinking, yeah, Mikey Hito, that would be a great surprise. Come on now. <laughs> Love you, motherfuckers! <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry. <laughs> Speaking of returns, Anna J, great to see her back, but could she look less thrilled running to the ring to save her best friend? I, I, I don't know, baby. I don't know whether they just told her to run out or something, or... She was trying to look tough or something. Is just <laughs> <laughs> she needs more work with her face, you know, like to her facial expression. She needs mm -hmm. to work more like that. Like, like already Ty Conti already has all that, you know. She's like a bubbly, smiley face, but then when she's upset, she gets really aggressive and stuff. So, I'm hoping that Ty Conti helps, you know, Anna J. You know, hell, Jungle Boy, come on, help your girl out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we got, oh, a few, we got a few switches for um, All In and the Buy-In. Uh, Buy-In match was supposed to be the Women's Casino Battle Royal. That is now on the main card. Uh, the match for Andrade and uh, Bastard Pac has been dropped for now. They said it will be on a future rampage. Uh, there is travel restrictions holding uh, Pac. Uh, wait, 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 wait. For our viewers, they heard travel issues, so now you're adding something. So they said travel issues. They didn't say travel. Issues. travel issues. Yeah. So yes. I, what is it though? What is it? Because that upset me because I wanted to see that match. That was my anticipated match: Andrade versus Pac. I know? mean, we're gonna get it. We just don't know when yet. Yeah, they're putting it on free TV, so that's smart of them because they're gonna put it on a rampage, so that it could help their ratings right there. That's smart of them. Uh, we will get a 10-man match on the buy-in instead. I uh, have the Hardy Family Office taking on um, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, and... I think it's Best Friends, uh, but it's yes, just yes. Um, Orange yeah, Orange Cassidy. Um, Wheeler, you um, Yeah, and uh, what's the... Oh, oh my God, that's so bad. Chuck yeah. Tingle. Chuck Tingle, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> um, there's so many names to try to remember. Sorry. Oh. I'm excited to see Orange Cassidy and Juggle Boy in a team. I'm hoping maybe one of these days we'll have them face each other one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sorry. I'm ready for, like, Darby Allen versus Orange Cassidy, Jungle Boy versus uh, Darby Allen. I don't know if that ever already happened. Um, Jungle Boy versus Orange Cassidy, you know? <laughs> I'll just say it about that world. I don't think it's happened. Yeah, exactly. I'm just ready for the younger talent to face each other because, you know, because those, those uh, them three plus, you know, MJF, you know, they're just going to have like stellar matches because of how they've been treated in AEW. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this weekend we'll be doing, you know, an all out preview show and that, that'll be a lot of fun to discuss some of these matches. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. <laughs> uh, rumor. Uh, Juvencid Guerrera uh, says he wants to do more work with AEW. Uh, believes his match with Chris Jericho was just the first step on his way in the door there. Uh, what do you think about Guerrera trying to make a comeback and join AEW? Yeah, it's smart because, like, you know, he's he's a cruiserweight, you know, a former cruiserweight champion. Um, he's um, and he did pretty he's well. Been in the I'm sorry? He did pretty well for not having wrestled for a while when he came yeah. back. Yeah. And plus, he could probably help out some of the younger talents, you know, like some, some mm -hmm. of them that are smaller, you know, because, like, he is a small dude, you know, like, you know, yeah. help out, like, Darby Allen or um, who else is there? That's Jungle um, Boy. Yeah. Yeah, Jungle Boy, you know, uh, Orange Cassidy, you know. So, yeah, they could help him out. Maybe be a producer there. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, there was an interview uh, on Inside the Ropes. Uh, they were talking about MJF. Um, they asked him which wrestler made him decide that he wants to be in the business. Uh, do you have any guesses? You might not be able to guess it, but when you hear it, you're going to say it makes sense. 
trying to think what his character's based off of. I have a feeling it's like a very obvious person. I th- it's like it's like an obvious like kind of like a JBL kind of character because like the abbreviation and the being a prick and stuff. Maybe him. Close. Uh, it was Roddy Rowdy Roddy Piper. <laughs> he yeah. went very old school. Okay, yeah. he went very old school. I mean, just that heel heat kind of character and and just as well as Roddy Piper. Yeah. Yeah, Roddy Piper was the original bastard. Like, he was the original one that knew how to be a bastard, you know, and make it cool in a sense. Because, like, you know, MJF, like, even though he's a dick, he's kind of cool on doing it, you know, because, like, he knows what he's doing. So I can never see him turn face. (laughs) Can you imagine him as a face? I doubt that. (laughs) MJF was a face for a while when, uh, when, with, Back in the beginning, when Sean Spears hit Cody with that chair, busted him open. Oh, MJ, everybody, was everybody knew he was going to turn on him. Come on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was be faced for four or five, six weeks. Right. <laughs> That's funny. Uh. And Jeff is going to be one of those characters, you know, we get him for a face every once in a while, but he's just, just going to be the better heel all the time. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, exactly. I just, like, to me... Honestly, I don't see him working well if he ever goes somewhere else. I can't see him work anywhere else except AEW, honestly. Yeah. I think, like, you know, I feel like he'll probably be, like, the long term. Like, if AEW sticks, I, I which I hope they do, you know, I mm-hmm. think he'll probably be the mainstay there of, for, like, 10 years to come, you yeah. know? I agree. But you never know, you know, the business always changes, like, how it was. Like, like what happened, like, the very was the only game out there but then they just screw people over and then they're just like no screw this let's make mm-hmm. our own companies and now we're in this wrestling boom which is hurting my pockets <laughs> <laughs> uh, last bit of business we'll get to is the Rhodes family newest adventure uh, Brandy Rhodes has come out with her own wine called Whoa Baby uh, it is a collaboration actually with heel star uh, Stephen Amell. Uh, they collaborated. Uh, they call it Whoa Baby. It's a rosé from Washington State. Uh, it's actually available for purchase. It's coming from Knocking Point Wines. Okay. Any, any interest in trying it? I'll, I, I'm not big of a wine person. I mean, if they have like white wine, I don't mind white wine. Like, you know, but. Mm-hmm. Um, no, but I mean, that's smart. I mean, like, uh, like, look, the Bella Twins have their own wine. Like, I know a lot of celebrities create their own wine as well. Like, like Cameron Diaz, like, she has her own wine herself. Like, that's why she kind of, like, now that she has, like, a child and she decided to leave Hollywood, like, she has her business, you know, that she needs to do, which yeah. helps her stay home and be with her child. So, yeah, no, that's smart. Mm-hmm. And plus, like, look, look what happened with uh, Chris Jericho's champagne. Like, the little bit of the bubbly, come on. And blew right up. Exactly. So I mean, it's smart for her to do it. It's just, but it's gonna be Brandy Rhodes, so doing it. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's some people who say, "Oh, it's Brandy. I'm not gonna buy it." But no. Yeah. I mean, but with Maybe. Steven, but with Steven Amell's name on it, I think they'll probably do well. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, folks. As you can see now, scrolling at the bottom, you know, you can check us out on Twitter. Oh, here. before. Before we go, can I just say something? Can I just say something? Mm-hmm. I think right now we're in a good time for you to support other wrestling promotions because I think it's now time for other wrestling promotions to get some recognition because I just watched Empower this past weekend. I have to say that that was the most amazing pay-per-view that I've ever seen when it was all the card was with women. Unfortunately, they didn't have the chance to book anything or the chance to advertise for a lot of things, you know, they did it out of word of mouth. They did it because of Mickey James's name on it, which they wanted to do that, which I feel like that hopefully if you ever have a chance, please order that pay-per-view to at least support all those women, because mm-hmm. I have a feeling that that should be a yearly thing that NWA should do, you know, and like now that how the business is going, I, I feel like NWA is probably going to start getting 
more wrestlers and uh, produce more shows, which is, I'm hoping that's going to happen. Hopefully them, Ring of Honor, um, Impact, like Impact is killing it right now. Like, you know, mm-hmm. thanks to this whole Forbidden Door thing that they did, it was a smart thing to do because like now a lot of these promotions, a lot of like indie shows, like look at GCW, like GCW is doing just amazing stuff. Isn't yeah. it? You know? I mean, did you ever think we would see Nick Gage on a network tele- network wrestling show? No. And especially like in a match with Chris Jericho of all people. Yeah. Like Chris Jericho does it. Re- well, I mean, he has. I mean, so like, I'm Don't just by Domino's nonetheless. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like, no, but then all of that, like Mark Cardona winning the championship there and being hated by the crowd. And, <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. like it, but it, that just saying like uh, what they're doing is just smart because it's just helping the business out, like but the wrestling business. And I just feel like for everybody out there, like you feel like you're getting tired of WWE, there are other things. I know it may get a little bit pricey and stuff, but just give it a chance, you know? Mm-hmm. Like for Impact, they do have that Impact uh, Insider on YouTube for 99 cents. I know they do a lot of recaps for like Ring of Honor and NWA on YouTube as well, which is free, you know? So there are ways that you can watch the shows and then whenever you have the chance to buy a pay-per-view for them, do it because it's worth it. Mm. I feel, you know, because right now we're in this type of wrestling boom that I, I don't know, like what, like since like the seventies or eighties, because there were so many companies at that time. You know, get it on the ground floor, you know, catch, you know, catch up with all these smaller promotions. Get mm-hmm. IWG TV. It's another great one. Yeah, exactly. So there, there's like, and like, and like, um, with the women's uh, pay-per-view that happened. Like that was like the first that there was so much opportunities for women. Like I've never seen like multiple women tag teams like in different promotions. Hopefully there will be more, you know. Um, seeing three, uh, seeing two women's world championship matches happening, you know. Seeing some veterans coming back that I've never heard of that it's, I started Googling about. So it's just like, it's just a beautiful time right now for me. And going back to uh, you know, Empower, I mean, the buzz for that went around for about two, three days afterwards. People were still talking about it. I'm telling you, Sarah, I, I suggest to you watch it. It's so worth it. Especially uh, Camille versus Layla Hirsch. That match, I was utterly shocked on how amazing that match was. Especially, like, because of the sides difference. But mm-hmm. they made it work that the crowd was on their feet for that match. They were just in awe of that match. It was amazing, I have to say. Also, speaking of NWA, I'm still in shock. I think all this has finally lost the title. I know. Yeah, like when I watched the the NWA uh, 73, that made me purchase both pay-per-views because I wanted to support NWA as well because they created this pay-per-view. So I actually Mm -hmm. watched their pay-per-view. I was like utterly floored that they had him lose the title. I don't know what his future holds, you know? So I don't know if, whether he's going to another promotion, maybe. Like, maybe he just decided, like, now it's the time to move on and let somebody else do it and let some new cats come in to help out Trevor Murdoch. I mean, it's just it's just amazing uh, to me. Like, it's just like that. But that match was really good, though. Like, how they told the story right there and, like, how Trevor Murdoch was fighting to make sure that he does not lose his love for professional wrestling, which is just an amazing story to me. Mm-hmm. All right. So that will do it for us now. Um, again, check us out on Facebook. You know, we got our group, we got our page, Twitter at Bugglebomb ENT, our merch store. We will be doing a sale this weekend. Uh, code Labor Day to five dollars off any shirt. It's not much, but hey, every little bit helps. Mm-hmm. Yep. Also, you can check us out now on Amazon Audible Podcasts. We are finally mm-hmm. there. We finally made it. Yes, um, we made it. Tune in we are on. And of course, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Give us a five-star review. And we got a couple other podcasts we're working on getting on. I'm just waiting for the approval process. So I'm going to take a couple weeks. We're going to be everywhere, folks. You're going to hear us right. all everywhere. That's right. <laughs> and, of course, if you're watching us, you know we're on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel as well. 
Yeah, like, subscribe, share it to your friends so that that way they can listen and watch us as we discuss all things wrestling. And check us out this weekend. Uh, we'll announce it on our Facebook page, Twitter, and group. We'll be doing a live, probably a live show for All Out Preview. Yes. Come join us, please. Give us some comments, some likes, some questions, please. <laughs> Let us know how right I am and how wrong Orlando is in our prediction. No, you're wrong. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Probably. I never do well in guessing the pay-per-view, so. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, everybody.